Hey guys, uh, welcome to another episode of Hunker Down with Seth, filmed exclusively in Long Beach, California, on a very sunny corner, eight blocks away from the beach. Today, I have a absolute wonderful, wonderful guest. I said wonderful twice because one wonderful can't contain my next guest. She has directed an improvised hip hop. She has directed uh, a improvised teen movie, Little Bitches, and she works at the Market Foundation. Somebody I've known, respected, and had a lot of fun with hanging out over the years, Tiffany Hit. Tiffany, thank you for joining me. How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. So, first things first, something that I put out there a while ago, but I still don't know why it happens. Uh, you work at the Market Foundation, and the gu- do. and the gum wall, you know, with this pandemic, is, <laughs> is there any plans of getting rid of that? Because that place is, could be like a, you know, a nuclear meltdown site. Sorry to... It, <laughs> Sorry to just dive right in on this, that's but a, no, that's a great thought. You know, we were kind of joking about it when the whole um, crisis hit, which is like, yeah, what kind of is manifesting in the gum wall? They do clean the gum wall off now once a year, um, and it's usually in November. Um, and so I imagine that they'll probably do it sooner than they usually do, but I haven't heard any direct plans. We joke at, at um, Unexpected Productions that the gum wall keeps us healthy. <laughs> so our yep. cast as a whole is pretty um, healthy and thriving, and um, we say that, you know, being around the gum wall so often, I think, is giving us superpowers. So That's true. Or you... You know, depends on how you look at it. <laughs> yeah, the way I look at it is uh, you have six, at least six people in the cast that are doctors like licensed medical doctors so Mm -hmm. so that's why i think everybody's (laughs) healthy or yes yeah that that could be (laughs) that or randy just hides the stats you never know yeah yeah (laughs) all right so let's go to an improvised hip hop. this i know is your baby your bread and butter this is the one this is your uh, highlight film like the, yes. So uh, let's. I'm very curious about the history. Take me through it. Sure. So, in 2014, so a little over about six years ago, um, there was an opportunity up at UP North, which is kind of our North um, uh, theater location, and there was a show called Unexpected Experiments. So there was the opportunity to pitch a show and um, just throw it up for one night and try it out. And so um, Jay, who's my husband, he was in charge. And so he was like, hey, if you could do any show, what would it be? And it was almost without hesitation. I was like, oh, my gosh, an improvised hip hop <laughs> um, because I love improvised hip hop. And um, I loved the MTV original movie Carmen, a hip hop that was produced in 2001, starring super young, hot Beyonce and Mackay Pfeiffer and Mostef and all of these great um, stars. And they basically told the story of Carmen, which is usually an opera, as a hip hop And I just thought it was so great. Um, and so I said, well, let's do an improvised hip hop And so um, gathered together at the time, it was pretty scrappy. We had Jason DeLeo on uh, basically a laptop with some beats <laughs> and um, some really talented and brave performers. And we did our first hip hop um, and it was a hit. It was so great. And I knew that we could turn it into something really fantastic if we worked hard at it. And so after that, I basically did a string of short runs, um, at the main stage at, um, Unexpected production. So we did like a Sunday night show. Um, we have taken it to other theaters within Seattle, like Rebar, we sold out, which was really exciting. And the rendezvous, um, we took it up to the Alaska Improv Festival, where it was basically the crowd favorite. And we did a big um, throwdown with a couple other hip hop groups that had all gathered in Alaska to do this awesome kind of mashup competition thing. Um, what I like to claim is that improvised hip hop was around before Hamilton. 
So nice. after we had done the show for a, a year or two, people started pinging me like, hey, there's a new hip hop show on Broadway called Hamilton. Have you heard of it? You know, and so um, I was a slow adopter on Hamilton and that I was like, I really try to stay true to the authenticity of hip hop and the sound and the culture and the history. Um, and I thought at first uh, that, you know, the Hamilton was a little too Broadway. Um, I, of course, have changed my mind after yeah. listening to the um, soundtrack and then eventually saw Hamilton when it toured to Seattle. And I was like, all right, OK, they're on to something that's pretty great. But what we try to do is to stay true to that um, origin of telling an operatic kind of tragic story. Um over the years, I've developed a partnership with Dre Anderson, who I know you interviewed previously, who's so talented, and he's a great partner, and we have a really wonderful shared vision. Um, Dre has really brought in the authenticity of hip-hop and really celebrating the pillars of hip-hop, which is really um, the components of, of hip-hop as a culture and hip-hop as music, which involves, um, you know, bringing in live beats. So we have uh, live beatboxers now. Um, the B-Boy B-Girls, which is really exploring the dance elements of expression and kind of artistry to create these mini music videos, essentially, within the story, um, as well as, of course, the MC freestyling and the graffiti of the artistry and the, the movement and the storytelling that we're doing. Um, so that's been really great, bringing on Dre as my co-director, and the show has really taken off um, from there. So yeah. over the years, we went from a really small cast with a laptop to now like multiple live beatboxers and a band and a huge cast um, of talented folks around uh, Seattle who are not only really talented improvisers, but really talented freestyle rappers and singers. Um, and finding people who can do both really well is challenging. So, um, but yeah, it's it's great. It's a, always a huge um, crowd hit when we can do it. And my greatest moments are when people remember the songs afterward. So there's been a few times where after a show, you know, the next week I've seen somebody like in Pike Place Market or. Um, on the street and they sing the song at us and I'm like oh my god I can't believe you can remember um you know that song like it's it's just one of the greatest feelings in the world so nice okay let's uh backtrack I got a few questions first of all mm -hmm. what kind of hip-hop groups are in Alaska I mean that's <laughs> there's a group called Chocolate Renaissance Theater and Chocolate. um Chocolate Renaissance they, Theater yeah uh huh. Yeah, yeah. They were great. They were out of Anchorage, um, oh. and they do improvised hip hop songs. No, nobody else really does quite what we do in the operatic long form storytelling. Um, yeah. I know that North Coast in New York does kind of an anybody anybody um, historical uh, hip hopera, kind of like an improvised Hamilton. Yep. But uh, nobody else in our region is really doing what we're doing. I don't know. I'm just curious about the, you know, Alaskan hip-hop scene. Because there's, like, MC yeah. Salmon <laughs> or MC Oil Company. So, <laughs> but, uh, okay, so another thing. Uh, uh, who's the hype man? Oh, hype man's got to be Dre. Yeah, he's oh. he's just so good at inspiring people. Like, yeah. I mean, he can walk into any room, walk down the street, and get make friends instantly. Get people to join in on singing their songs and um, and all of that. I'm hype man in that I keep it going and I keep us focused. Um, but that's a different kind of hype. Yeah, that that's you know. You you're utilizing too many people. You can't in hip hop, but you gotta like say, we gotta have assigned roles to make everything great. I think, just a suggestion, not telling you what you should do. Just get a designated hype man. You know, maybe fly him up from Long Beach every, every so often, every uh -huh, performance. Uh -huh. You know, because you got hip hop hype in you, sir. I live in the LBC. I. <laughs> like hey, you know, I was born in Long Beach, California. I think 
Like, I don't know if you knew that. I know so that I now. I think that's part of where I get, like, my deep down love for West Coast, old school hip hop. LBC. Yeah. <laughs> Even though I grew up in Washington. Yeah, regulate. Mm hmm. You know? Exactly. I, I live. I tell every. This might be the fifth time I mentioned this on the show. But uh, you don't know that line in our regulate uh, swing a left on the 2 1 towards Lewis, see some guys and say, let's do this? Mm hmm. I live on that road where you swing a left. I'm just a few what? blocks away from that, you know. So, nice. in fact, just the other day, me, uh, we were rolling on the east side of the LBC. Uh, we got a burrito and we went back to self quarantine. So, I think that's the line. <laughs> I think so. It is now. Yeah, that's the modern line. So, <laughs> but all right. So you, you're. I love hit improvised hip hop, and also duos. We've had a lot of fun. Let's talk about our history. We've mm-hmm. we've never had a ill word to say about each other. I've a fun story. I don't know if you remember this. Uh, one night at duos night, that for the viewers, it's if you go back to the J Hit episode, it's the open mic where two people improvise together. If anybody could sign up. Definitely, when it's over, go to everyone you can. Um, so, duos night, one night I came, I, I signed up with you, and I called uh, my fiancé, and I said, yeah, I'm doing a duo with uh, Tiffany, and she said, but she's so much better than you. <laughs> and, oh, because then, yeah, yeah she is good. <laughs> yeah, and she is absolutely right, too, so I'm not going <laughs> to. Well, you know, we each have our own strengths. Yeah, mine is not acting, not improvising. I mean, my strength... But you certainly improved over the years. Oh, definitely. But but that's because I learned the little tricks. Uh, some of the tricks were are, um, if I could find a way to get off stage and go in the crowd, do that. If I could find a way mm-hmm. to die on stage, I would do that. You know... It, I mean, improv is for everybody as long as you work around your weaknesses. <laughs> yep. You know. It's a good philosophy. That my weakness is I can't keep a straight face to save my life. So. <laughs> but you got that beautiful smile. <sighs> it's, it is wonderful. So are, <laughs> so are there any uh, duo moments be either between us or just out there that you've experienced that really come to mind as memorable or really fun or just really crazy? Ooh, well, when I'm thinking about you and some duos, I mean, that was crazy to me and that we would do a mini piggyback oh, when we both. would go up there. So you are very comfortable doing stand-up comedy, whereas I'm very comfortable improvising. And so what I loved about our mini piggyback duos is that we each got to do the thing that we were most comfortable with and the thing that we are maybe intimidated by. So for me, stand-up is really intimidating. Um, I often joke that when I'm improvising, it's like, oh, oops, I tripped and landed on funny, you know? It's like there's really low expectations and you kind of trip and fall into the funny. Um... And where stand-up, I think, is very vulnerable. You're like, you write something down, you practice it in the mirror, you think it's funny, and then you basically stand there, like, naked in front of the audience, telling the funny jokes and hoping that they agree with you. So for me, doing the piggyback duos where you um, would do the stand-up and then we'd do a scene, and then I would do the stand-up, and then a scene was actually really challenging for me and and kind of scary. Um, but that was the best, that's always the best thing about duos is that it's a great time to experiment. And it's like, oh, you got eight minutes. You know, when it's over, it's over. You can do it again next week. <laughs> it's yep. like improv isn't precious, you know? Yeah. Um, but those are some really fun moments for me. Yeah, and I think it helped when I told you that during the stand-up portion, you didn't have to literally be naked. So. Yes, I, I was glad that you corrected me after that first time. Even though I didn't take my own advice, I let you know that <laughs> yeah. you didn't. It was optional. 
You know, you decide to go the conservative route, I decide to go the more artistic route. So. Right. But we all have to follow our own artistic vision, you know? Oh, for sure. But, you know, artistic vision, like other duos, for me, that have been the fun, most fun are the character ones. So I love it when, you know, me and my fellow improviser friends are shooting the shit at the bar and we'll be like, oh my god, let's be Atlantic City casino women. <laughs> and, like, let's, you know, do a duo as these... And oftentimes that's how, like, some of my favorite characters come about. We're like, okay, cool, we'll do it. And then we'll basically show up in whatever costumes we can scrounge together that day. And, yeah. you know, not think too hard about what your character is going to be and have it kind of come out, like, that day, that evening, and then on stage. And then sometimes those are, like, the best characters that um, you like to keep and do again. So my favorites are with... Um, one of my favorite duo partners is Laurel Ryan, and oh, yeah. we did this. We won the duo championships in 2012, not to brag, but um, we did it with these two hipster girls called Standard and Focus, and it was called That's Hot, and we would do these scenes. And, and it was kind of when hipsters were new, so like now it wouldn't be as crazy. But in 2012, like hipsters were pretty innovative, and we would do these scenes. And we won this championship, and it was so amazing. A year after that, these two Bainbridge elementary school teachers were back at duos, and they saw me, and they were like, oh, my God, you were part of the standard and focus. And they were like, we do you in our break room. And I was like, <laughs> what? What do you mean? And they're like, we do you. We imitate you. And when we're goofing off, we're, like, standard and focus. And I was like, all right, made it. Like, that's, like amazing so really it's the character stuff when you can bring in costumes and kind of like a production value and and have that element of comedy oh definitely yeah it this is where you and me completely differ because uh but it (laughs) differ in a great like the yin and the yang forming something great because personally i love the more games driven stuff like i said you know Mm -hmm. emphasize the positive hide the weakness because uh but uh, you know, even when, even when we were doing duos together, the one duo that you and me did that really comes to mind was uh, an infiltration night where I wanted to do a heist, and you're like, "Oh yeah, that'd be mm. fun." And then uh, your character was a, you know, an elderly woman, and it it was just <laughs> so funny. I couldn't stop laughing during the scene. It was so great. <laughs> remember that one but it sounds about right <laughs> yeah it was the first ever duos infiltration and uh, you and me were up first yeah. and jay infiltrated us so but i remember <laughs> specifically that night i said hey let's i really want to do a heist and you're like all right let's do it so and then as soon as you started talking like the elderly woman i i was laughing <laughs> after all my lines and through my lines uh, that sounds fun. I want to do it again. <laughs> uh, definitely, I'll start an improv scene down here. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, down here, it is... From what I've seen with the improv, it is so corporate because basically everybody wants to be discovered. Everybody wants to be famous. So they don't really go with the artistic stuff. They go with more of the... Uh, standard stuff, but try to let their talent, you know, break through. And, mm-hmm. and that's why UP was so great. They were like, hey, let's just, you got a good idea for a show? Let's If Randy likes it, let's throw it on stage. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what's fun, too, I think about improv in Seattle is, I mean, there we have a lot of really talented people who move on and move down to L.A. or... New York or other areas, but for the most part, it's like, if you're doing improv in Seattle, your goal usually is just to be, like, the best improviser in Seattle, so that would be my goal, you know, yep. there's there's improvisers that I look up to and um, that, you know, I, I want to be known to be the best, and and so that's why I think it, it keeps it here and it keeps it real and it keeps me, like, taking chances and trying hard because... I'm not, you know, trying to market myself to, you know, be on SNL or, or, you know, to get a TV pilot or something like that. So it's kind of less pressure 
on that and it was more the ability to just like have fun and take chances and be in the moment yeah and that that's so true because Seattle Seattle the improv is like okay I just want to be better than last week for the most part mm-hmm. and even people who have been doing improv for decades always try to you know find little notes and sort of like take in new tricks that somebody uh, have done mm-hmm. yeah. and letting the the good ones or the ones who say like this person has is amazing at this. I want to be able to do that really well. You know, like yep. there are certain people like like Elizabeth Westerman, for instance. She's amazing at specificity. So instead of saying, "I want to go to the store to get some milk," she'd be like, "I want to go to the Piggly Wiggly to pick up some two percent." You know, so it's yep. like certain skills, um, and you can watch somebody and go like, "Ah, okay, I need to be better at that," or "Oh, I need to be better at that." Yeah. Um, but it is funny about Seattle Improv is that. I, like we're kind of snobby about it. Like we have, have a really distinct style and especially at UP, it's really narrative. And so when I go to other cities in, um, you know, across America, like we'll always be like, okay, let's go check out an improv show like in Nashville or New York or, um, you know, other places and LA and, and not to, to diss, but I think it's just like a different style where I'm like, uh, you know, I think we, we do this better or, Oh, okay. That was really cool. They're really quick witted or like really good at finding the game or whatever. But I, I wonder if it's kind of the mom's meatloaf thing where it's like, we really like our style up here. Um, and when you go, it like kind of like you like your mom's meatloaf recipe and someone else makes you meatloaf. You're like, that's all right. You know, I can see why you like it, but I like my meatloaf. Um, but I do love it when people come and see, see, uh, see shows and they'll be like, oh my gosh, I've seen improv all over the world. This is the best I've ever seen. And, you know, that always feels good. I'm not saying that Seattle improv's the best in the world, but, mm-hmm. you know, we're up there. Like, we do really good stuff, and sometimes I wish we had more of kind of a national reputation or people that were aware of, like, the good stuff that we're doing up here. Yeah. But it could just be that it's always rainy and we're, you know, bored and, and in the theater, and so we have more time to, like, spend on the stage. <laughs> Yeah, plus, uh, um, unfortunately, unless your name is Jana Hutchinson, you're not the best improviser in Seattle. I just want to get that out there. And I'm including... Yeah, it's true. I, I, I know. I'm, I, uh, I'm, not, I'm not signaling out you. I'm signaling out everybody. Unless you're Jana, right. you're not the best. That's so. true. That's true. And the best part is she doesn't even care. <laughs> Right, and that's what makes her so good. Yeah, she she's just like, oh yeah, I do improv. How was your day today? So, so, <laughs> yeah. so outside of improv, what what's going on in your life? What's what's on the uh, personal level, not just the business level? Oh, well, um, really fun thing that's happened over the last twenty four hours is Ooh. that I signed up for TikTok. Breaking news. And, yeah, <laughs> last night, um, Jay and I stayed up until 3 a.m. making TikTok videos in our kitchen, and, my God, that is bringing us a lot of joy. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, you can find me on TikTok at Tiffany Hit. <laughs> nice. Um, and, uh, Seth, you would like it because just this morning I posted a picture or a video of Jay decked out in his apocalypse costume or outfit. So, like, you know, full armor and gear and a helmet and his swords and his nunchucks. And he did a video um, showing off his sword skills. Wow. So, it's pretty out there stuff, but it's like making his belly laugh so hard. I don't know why, but it's really fun. Yeah. And I'm aware that I'm not like, you know, a 20 year old with a six pack, but hey, there's room in, on TikTok for everyone. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I don't have it just because the Chinese government runs it, but, uh, you know, I've, I've seen them. My dad <laughs> messages me so many TikToks. So. <laughs> Is that true? Yes, the Chinese government legitimately runs TikTok. <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> I gotta Google that, but I'm pretty. I'm like eighty percent sure that's eighty percent. 
Wow. So, Good to know. <laughs> but yeah, if you want all your personal data downloaded by the Sons of Mao, uh, in exchange for you to lip sync I Will Survive, all the power to you. <laughs> oh dear, yep. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, any anything else? Any uh, scripts yeah. or show ideas? I mean... You know, it's always what's next. Oh, another show, another show that I've done a couple times um, is this fantastic show called A Backline. So I love A Chorus Line, the Broadway musical. It's like yeah. been my favorite since I was a young kid. And um, there's so many really talented singers at UP. And so we did this show where a chorus line, the premise is basically that people are, are auditioning to make it into a chorus, to dance in a chorus line on a Broadway show. And the whole idea is that like people are getting real, you know, the director's like, doesn't care necessarily about their kickball change and their jump split leap, but they are like, who are you? Why do you, why do you matter? Like who makes you, what makes you who you are? And so we took that idea and we're doing a backline, which is like a group of people who are waiting in line for something. Uh, doesn't, it's not necessarily getting into a, a show, but like waiting in line at Disneyland or at the DMV or something like that. Um, but it's using that Broadway um, musical style um, to like share the personal stories of the people waiting in line. And um, we've only done two so far, but they were both like really, really fun and really great. And um, so if I have a chance to direct another show, it would definitely be that. Um, I wouldn't count on probably directing something at UP for quite some time because I've kind of um, built my, spent my eggs with hip hop, <laughs> yeah. but um, considering taking it to different theaters and things because it's, it's really good. And, and it just is another example of when you have a really great cast and you have really great chemistry then you can do no wrong and so um that's i think the magic with this particular group and this particular style so i'm really excited about that so we might see that pop up at some point oh nice and uh yeah and anything you're working on like right now like what's the most outlandish idea you've come up with in your quarantine dreams Cause mm. I, I've had some pretty crazy ones. I had this idea for a uh, a Cracker Factory sitcom where uh, basically the owner and the founder of the Cracker Factory dies, and his uh, second wife and two ungrateful kids have to run it. So <laughs> who knows? Hey, that could be a hit. Trademark copyright Seth Lazier, twenty twenty. Hell yeah. One crazy idea that we're talking about is, you know, like having the theater be shut down for a couple of months. It's losing a, quite a bit of our annual um, revenue. So we've been kind of brainstorming. So my job at the Pike Place Market Foundation is an events manager, and we do fundraising to help the community. So, of course, I was like, well, what kind of fundraisers could we do for Unexpected Productions? And one fun idea that Jay and I had is like kind of an improv kind of old school telethon type of thing where you have like an MC and you're kind of cutting um, to different acts and different musical things and um, <clears throat> you know all to like raise money you know call this number to donate today with a, a bank of people on phones except for we probably do it online but you know yeah. to kind of like do that whole telethon thing so maybe we'll do that but I don't know yeah streaming type thing yeah, it's what? Like have it stream? Are you gonna have it streaming or? Yeah, like a stream. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah, I could just imagine like Dre going up there doing this great rap, and then immediately mm -hmm. after Jim Tracy comes on and plays the sax plays while saxophone. while yeah. Jay tap dances. <laughs> yep, you could come up do some stand up for us. Yeah, if you fly me up, totally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, maybe. Um, Oh, me and uh, Kent just going back and forth. <laughs> so, yeah, there's plenty yes. out there. We there's opportunity. Exactly. Just, but you guys got a great cast. I mean, I'm sure. 
uh, like John Stevens or you know some other name drop guys, Dan Paulsons or Mark Schoen could come up with great ideas other than me going oh, up and totally. telling my dick jokes again. <laughs> yeah, I think we have so many talents um, that it'd be fun to explore that. Yeah, or just there's one thing I always wanted to see, and I always brought it up to him, and he always agreed it was a great idea. Uh, Greg just giving Greg Stackhouse for the viewers who are uninformed, um, g- just giving golf instructions like legit golf instructions, but being hilarious while it, doing mm-hmm. it. So that would and you would kind of berate you while you're <laughs> while oh you're yeah doing it, like don't stick your butt out like this no no <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh, that's ideas. I think there's something there. Yeah, why not? Or, or Michael Bilzy, you know, Michael Bills, Bilzy, uh, just going on stage and mm-hmm. just being Bilzy. Yeah, just like doing like a motivational speech. Yeah. As it's a like zookeeper. About you and how wonderful you are. Yeah. <laughs> No, that's the thing about it. See, this is improv, guys. We're just coming up, you know, pick a cast member, right. then pick a, you know, like, uh, mm-hmm. Chaz going fishing in Iraq. Who knows? Yep. Yeah, and he could do his famous chainsaw legs. Oh, <laughs> chainsaw legs? <laughs> yeah, that's a thing. Okay. Um,. You'll have to ask him about it. Oh, great. Now i got to have Chaz on the show. Uh, now you got to have Chaz. Yeah. I mean, I love Chaz. If anyone ever asked me who's my favorite person at UP, I'd just say Chaz just because there's very few people who would disagree, <laughs> at least along the male's side. Uh, mm-hmm. Not... Yeah. Yeah. By the way, one of my lines... Okay, so Jay hits 50th birthday roast. Not to get too... Uh, you know, full of myself. I had, I was a good roaster. I had a very good set. You were amazing. Yes. You were like doing it right. Yeah. But uh, one of the lines I didn't use because he wasn't there was I was going to tell Jay that he looks young enough for Chaz to date. <laughs> oh my God. That yeah. would have been good. Yes, but Chaz, yeah, wa- mean- Chaz wasn't there, so I didn't use it. Oh, people would have still appreciated it. Yeah, but it's one of those things. I didn't want to make fun of somebody not there, so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, although, it's good integrity. Although I had a great line that I, that I didn't ask him if I could use, so I didn't do it. Um, I said, uh, Brendan Felker is not here because when he learned that Jay's 50th anniversary or 50th birthday roast wasn't about him. But uh, I couldn't get a hold of Brad. Yeah. I couldn't get a hold of Felker soon enough, so you know, to get the okay for that line. So that's really nice that you checked in. Yeah, definitely. I, you know, I don't want to make make fun of people who aren't in on the joke. So yeah, yeah, yeah. You were definitely, um, I would say, the best at. Jay's roast because the rest of the people were improvisers and improvisers are so nice. Yeah. So it's like some of them were teasing, but for the most part, it was really nice, and you were just like going for it, which I, was appreciated. I know it, it's like they wanted to suck up to people. It's like guys, you dislike so much about everybody else. Your improvisers go for it. <laughs> I mean, I could tell you ten things that piss me off about. Ten different improvisers, but that's why you love them. Mm-hmm. So, well, the, what pisses you off about Chaz? I mean, absolutely nothing personal, you know. And I do love Chaz. Um, he's just uh, <laughs> don't. It's like <laughs> it's like the things <laughs> the things he takes seriously. He takes too seriously to a point where he can't change his mind about it. <laughs> so, and I love him. So, but there's times when it's like, I'll walk up, or 
you know, there were times where I walk up to him. He's like, hey, what's going on? He's like, hey, uh, I'm in a conversation. I'll get to you in a little bit. I'm like, oh, all right, no problem. It's like, <laughs> come on, Chazzy. What um, pisses you off about me? You? Uh, oh, man. This is a tough one because you are... What pisses me off about you is that you took Jay away from me. Oh. Yes. Good answer, good answer. Uh, me and Jay could <laughs> could have been in Idaho raising sheep together, but uh, nope. That's so true. Now, there, yeah. there's nothing off the top of me. You have been the friendliest, most wonderful person I've come across, and uh, it, it's... Uh, I don't know, it's just... Here's here's the problem. I've never been in a serious show with you. So we've never had a... Like, piggyback, I was always... When it came to improv, I just said, Jay, you take care of that, I'll take care of the stand-up, and whatever happens, happens. But we never, ever butt heads. Mm-hmm. You know, if there's... Never yeah. had any issues, never... And it... And we kept everything fun, so... That's why you're on the show, because you're one of my favorite people. Thank you. Well, I always appreciate, and I tell people um, this about you if they don't know you, is that I really appreciate your like sense of self and your stay true to your style and your sense of humor yep. and stuff, even down to your like super random Facebook posts that make me laugh all the time. <laughs> and they're short and to the point, and they're... Uh, original ideas oftentimes and you know to come up with an original idea nowadays in 2020 is really tough I think and I think you come up with original ideas and I appreciate that, well, that about you definitely that that's my favorite thing about a duo is like I love inventing games yeah uh -huh. you know, that, that was the thing it, it's like when I go back to emphasizing my strength it's like I'll I created like four or five games that I think are fun that could get us in trouble, but hey, you know, everybody else, just go ahead and do your, uh, you know, lists or, uh, or make it better, make it worse, which nothing wrong with that, but just come on, experiment a bit. Uh huh. Yeah, we did the selfie game not too long ago. Oh, for and we sure. gave you stage credit. We were like, "This is the Seth Lazier game." <laughs> yeah, and I'm I'm so happy that people still do that. Yeah, you know, it it's like I created, you know, there's a couple things that I created that people still do. It's nice. Yeah. All right. Well, and we wouldn't do them if they were dumb. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just the opposite. You do them because they are dumb. <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> That's fair. You know, that they're so dumb and fun. Who cares? <laughs> All right, well, this is a good time. Uh, I'm going to uh, wrap it up right now. Tiffany, you are absolutely wonderful. You are one of my favorite people. And next time you're in Long Beach, this time I won't ditch you guys for a Packer game. So. Yeah, please. <laughs> well, Seth, you are so wonderful, and I love that you're doing this, and I'm honored to be interviewed, and I wish you the best of luck. You too as Stay well. Healthy. Yes, we'll definitely stay in touch. So that's our show. Viewers, we'll catch you next time.